Hello everyone, um, this is going to be a molecular and cellular biology course, this is going to be an introduction mainly. Um, the attributions are going to be DNA and RNA and just little convoluted or deconvoluted aspects of how DNA and RNA function in cellular processes. Hopefully this will be very beneficial and accommodative towards your individualistic studies and your majors such as maybe molecular and cellular biology of course, microbiology or nursing or just how maybe your prerequis prerequisites. Or this could actually just be beneficial benefits in middle school too. So practically and pragmatically, in this course you're going to be learning like various biochemical responses in RNA and DNA. But this is not going to be very specific and very particularly peculiarated because this course is just going to be very general, very fundamental. Um, next, the um, the next lesson plan is going to be another introduction, except it's going to be a part two, number two because it's going to get into a more advantageous aspect as to how DNA and RNA function with other biochemical processes. We're also going to go over proteins, amino acids, and how the proteins are actually going to be sequential with amino acids. So hopefully that will also be found in your interests and it will be inclusively sociable inside of your interests. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy. Um, so what you will be comprehending, the basic physiological and anatomic aspects that are relevant to cellular factory. This may sound kind of um, convoluted, but um, practically you're just going to be learning the function and structure of cells. Okay, yeah, there's cells and the cellular factory such as like the Kelvin cycle, the, the Krebs cycle, just the cellular factory in general, how lipoproteins function, metabolism, just all of that. You're also going to be looking at simplistic biochemical alterations that are systematically fluctuated inside of the cellular functions. Um, you're going to be looking at how bio how their bio how biochemical catalysm will be altering the cellular fu um, functions inside, and how it's going to be fluctuating generically and regulating, like throughout your chronological um, experiences with your body. Um, you're also going to look at the genomic aspects that are inside it microbiologically and in computational aspects inside of cells. This is going to be hereditary information and it's also going to be how the genome is going to be beneficent towards bodily functions, RNA and DNA binding, and ligands, which is going to be how RNA and DNA are going to be binding to various confidential ligands that are very significant inside of the body. Basic microbiology, this will be bacteriums and how bacteria is also going to be affecting with eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. Um, multicellular and unicellular cells are going to be associated with this, and then how the multitude of formats in a manifold of cells are going to be attributably recognized of. So, for example, bast cell cells, um, bast cell glial cells, um, somas, nerve cells, all these other things, because you can differentiate within cells, because muscle cells are going to be differentiated with nerve cells, nerve cells are going to be differentiated with bast cell cells. So, you may think that all cells are the same inside of the body, but they're again, remember they're multicellular, not unicellular. So the structure is not always going to be the same. So introduction. Molecular and cellular biology is the biological aspects of the cellular processions inside of the cell. Um, it's also going to be studying the fundamental and perceptual biochemical compositions and molecules that are associable within the cellular processes. It also studies the diversity of various cellular components like multicellular cells. Molecular and cellular biology is tremendously associated with the confidential significance of biochemically significant molecules and how they are microbiologically emphasized inside of our cellular procession and thematic endorsements. Many other cell, um, aspects are associated within the cell. Molecular and cellular biology is practically what defines how the smallest components affect the most significant components in our body. It also studies and analyzes the, the molecular properties inside of a cell. You will see through all of the chronological lessons that the aspects get even smaller, from cells to amino acids and amino acids to the electron configuration of atomic components. I hope that you enjoyed the lecture and this will be this hope this will hopefully be beneficial to your studying. Thank you. So this is practically just saying how my um how molecular cellular biology is so significant in our present practices today and how these compon and we're also going to look at the molecular properties of components that, that are associable. Also store their hereditary information in the linear code. DNA. DNA is building blocks. DNA, the active ribonucleic acid, is one of the genomic building blocks of life that stores to create a mass amount of constructive and instructive information. Um, sorry. 
DNA can, I was just looking at the timer. <laughs> DNA can perform bodily alterations to our physiological components, as well as a response to biochemical activities in the body, and, of course, DNA depart, um, determines our hereditary secretion in our bodies. DNA has four things called nucleotide bases. Nucleotide bases are practically and essentially just these, um, these, these sugar backbones that are going to be ha classified as adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine. Um, we'll get to RNA later and how there's U, which is uracil. Um, adenine, um, so yeah, you saw those. These are the particular bases that are going to be constructing with DNA while being attached to phosphate backbones. The phosphate backbones, as you will see, are these yellow strings going down, and you'll also see the binding and how these bindings are already only going to have particular nucleotide bases that are um, um, binded and liganded with them. So the generic binding and ligand implementation for these particular nucleotide bases would be adenine, would be um, adenine or thymine, adenine and thymine together, and they're going to be binded. Guanine and um, cytosine together, and it's just going to be the reverse after that. Thymine and adenine, cytosine and guanine. So those are pretty important to remember, but you have to also take, you have to also be considerate about how these particular nucleotide bindings are going to be fluctuated within the cellular responses inside of the body. They're not always going to be generic, but that's just generic for the hereditary DNA. DNA. But if you if you look at something like lipoproteins, then it's going to be differentiated from what is actually going to be presently abundant. All cells transcribe pro portions of their hereditary information to the same intermediary form, RNA. DNA must be replicating itself in repetitiously oriented amalgamation of various biochemical aggregations. These particular conversions are going to be accommodative towards the conversion synthesizing other cellular responses. These conversions of DNA is going to be implemented to special nucleo acid called RNA, ribonucleic acid. There are two th synthesized procedures in which this is being implemented, transcription and translation. Um, transcription, DNA to RNA, translation, RNA to proteins. But I want to get deeper and de-escalatedly convoluted and say what this means. I want to get more specific. How genetic information is broadcasted for use inside of the cell. This is just a little figure that I just got from the internet because this, I'm actually taking all the context from a book but I'm using it in my own words. So, um, each cell contains a fixed set of DNA molecules. Its archive of genetic information. A given segment of this DNA serves to guide the synthesis of many identical RNA transcripts, which serve as working copies of the information stored in the archive. Many different sets of RNA molecules can be made by transcribing selected parts of a long RNA um, DNA sequence, allowing each cell to use its information stored differently. So, practically, what this is saying is that um, RNA is just another identical form of informa informative storing. But it's just going to get one strand of the DNA, but it's going to be making it more specific and it's going to be storing all of the information into separate nucleotides without them binded. But these are just going to be in an expendable information carriers. So they're also going to be synthesizing other biochemical catalysms inside of the body because they synthesize proteins. So yeah.